Hi, it's Lindy again, and today I wanted to take you through a presentation I did last week here for a local physician office. They had never used Office 365, and in fact, right after my presentation, they all logged in for the very first time. So I was trying to figure out the best way to present to them, and the doctor in the office said she just mainly wanted an overview of what can they expect, what can it do, and they're mainly using it for email. So let's get started. The first thing I did was I pulled up Office 365 online and I showed them the apps and explained, you know, what is an app, which is, you know, the former, we used to call them programs. And you can see here on the screen the ones that they got with their Office 365 tenant. And you can also get Office Mobile on your Android or iPhone for free. And then you can get online versions of Office anywhere you have an internet connection. You just sign into your account and you have all of these apps available. Then there's also the, the newer collaboration feature where you can collaborate on documents in real time with your coworkers. And in this group, four of them had Office on their laptops and the other four just had Office, uh, the online Office. So, and I also took a few minutes to explain to them the difference between Office 365 Home and Office 365. Like for example, I've got an Office 365 Home subscription that I use on home computers and I share with family members. But Office 365 that they had is a business product and they call it a tenant and that's what they had. And so I think they understood that. So going on, I wanted to show them their experience when they first logged in. And this URL here is just one of the uh, URLs that can be used when you first log in. There's an ellipsis in the upper left. It's not pictured here, and it'll show you in a uh, vertical view all of your apps. Then again, I just went over all of the apps. They're, like I said, they're mainly using mail, but we did go over a few of the others. And I also pointed out that only the admin would have this tab, and I wasn't sure about the security and compliance tab. Then setting up your account. When you're in the cloud and you're there for the first time, if you go over here and click your name in the upper right hand corner of your tenant, then this drop down will come and you can click on, I would first click on my profile and you'll be taken to this app called Delve, and that's where you can personalize your account. So this is Delve, it's just a little snapshot of it. And you can see I uploaded my picture, and I've got my email there, and uh, some other things. There's other things that you can update uh, if you want to. I did go on and show them a little more of that. And that's mainly for, I told them, probably for larger companies where people, not everybody knew each other and they maybe wanted to put more information in there about what they do so people could find them if they needed to more quickly. And I also pointed out you can make things private and you can choose to make some things public. Another thing you can do is personalize your theme when you first start when you log in and again you click on the my account all of these themes and at the same time down here you can see that you can choose a start page and be sure that you save your changes. The next thing I advised them was to personalize their office documents and this is mainly this will only apply to people who have office on the desktop and when you sign in click on the file and then you'll see this view which is called a backstage view and you want to enter in you can put a photo in here and you also want to sign of course then you'll be signing in with your office 365 account and you can also uh, sign in with a regular personal account if you want to it's just it's up to you the next what you can do, uh, you'll be able, after this is set up and you've been using it for a little while, you'll be able to see some documents, recent documents you've worked on. And this, I'm in PowerPoint here, and so I'm looking at some of the recent PowerPoint documents. And another thing I, I said would be a great thing to do is adding places in the back end of Office. And that's also with the file menu. 
And when you're there, you can click Add a Place and add your OneDrive and SharePoint cre uh, locations. You will you may have to sign in depending which account you're signed into, and then you'll be able to save your documents to these locations. You can see I've got them set up here, and it saves you time. Your your folders will appear and it's just a great way and a time saver. The next, we just took a brief look at some of the newer things that I thought they might eventually want to use. One of them is Microsoft Teams. And it's a collaborative tool where you can aggregate all your files and projects that you're using for a certain project. It's shared workspace. You can chat in there. You can work on documents in there. And there's a calendar in there. And then we went on to OneDrive for Business, and I explained that OneDrive is your personal place to put your business files, files that you don't need to share with anybody else. And you can upload files and folders of just about any type. These are some of them right here. And you can upload them in the cloud when you first start, so you can start your sync process, but then later on, you can use Windows Explorer. Here's another look at, here's uh, my OneDrive and, and SharePoint on my Windows Explorer. And then here's a look at what it looks like in the cloud. Uh, and of course, when you have it created, you can drag and drop and take things in and out and everything will sync back to the cloud. Or if you're in the cloud, then things will sync back to your desktop. It's really, it's really great. And then I also took a minute to explain the difference between OneDrive for business and OneDrive personal. For me, I have several OneDrive personal accounts and I actually have them in my Windows Explorer. I can tell the difference very easily because my, my business account will have my business name after it. And that's a great way you can tell. And your SharePoint site has the little building and that's how you know that's your SharePoint. And then SharePoint is for sharing files with your team or select groups of people. And when you start, when you get into your tenant, your company already has a main team site where documents can be stored and everyone can access them. And of course, new sites can be created depending on permissions that the, diff the different workers have. Also with SharePoint, I pointed out you can use SharePoint to store your files. You can share them out from there or you can really get into things and use it as a very powerful application for perhaps making people check files in and out. You can create lists, put metadata on your files to make them easier to find. There's workflows that you can create with SharePoint. You can make subsites, web parts. You can make your, your SharePoint site almost look like a website and do chat in there, calendar, photos, so much more. And then to end up, I just pointed them to a brand new Office 365 support site that just came out. And this site has an introduction into each app and you can just click right up here. They have cheat sheets, downloads, PDFs, infographics, quick start guides, and links to more training all right here. If you've never tried out Office 365, you can do a trial for free, but overview will give you some ideas of what it can do and maybe you'll want to investigate it for yourself. Thanks so much and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search for my name, Lynn Dye. Thank you.